الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونسعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالحق بسيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Our praise and thanks to Jesus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek his forgiveness We seek his assistance and we seek his guidance We take refuge with him from the evil within our souls and from the consequence of our misdeeds Whoever Allah gives guidance to none can mislead and whoever misleads none can guide I bear witness that there's nothing and no one worthy of worship besides Allah alone. He has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is his servant and messenger. We ask Allah to grant him peace and to extend to him our salutations on this blessed day during this blessed month. Just as we ask him to grant peace to his family members, companions, and everyone who follows in goodness and shows goodwill into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Jathiya, he says, بَعْدَ عَعُودُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمُ وَالْنُبُوَةِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُ مَنَا عَالَمِينَ We have given to the children of Israel <clears throat> we're giving them the book, Al Kitab, Wal Hukm, and we're giving them governance, Wal Nubuwa, and we're giving them prophecy, prophethood, and we have provided to them from all good things, and we have favored them over all people. Just as we gave them miracles from the divine affair. And they did not differ until after knowledge came to them out of enmity or rancor between one another. And verily your Lord will settle the disputes between them on Yom Qiyamah. Then he says, and then we place you upon a moral code from the divine affair. So follow it. And do not follow the desires and fancies of those who know not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's blessed many people. He's blessed the children, children of Israel. He's, trans, he's blessed the Arabs. He's blessed us as Muslims. And in this particular verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells the Prophet that he is to follow his sharia, that he places him upon a sharia, a moral path, a moral code, and orders him to follow that moral code. We know that so many of us are still mourning the recent attacks in New Zealand, the lost, the life loss, the martyrs in New Zealand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their martyrdom, and may Allah grant Jannah to those who have suffered during this great catastrophe, this massacre, unfortunate massacre. But it's important as well that we don't cave in to the pressure that may come at times for us to further obscure our religion, to sort of put it away in our pockets, to hide it and conceal it. And what's actually interesting is what you see in New Zealand happening right now is that many of the newscasters are actually wearing partial hijabs as they actually report the news. 
as an act of solidarity with Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, you've given us a moral code and in our environment, the word sharia is a negative term to many people. But we ourselves have to understand it. It's not a negative, negative term. It's not a, a bad thing. Sharia is not a bad word. This that jihad is not a bad, bad word because you just, it's just a matter of understanding it the proper, the proper way. It's not a bad word. And we as Muslims have no reason to be embarrassed about our religion, to be embarrassed about our beliefs, to be embarrassed about our practices because they come from the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's where they come from. They originate from the creator of the heavens and the earth. In the minds, we, we can't allow the fact that in the minds of many people that Sharia is limited to stoning or cutting off hands or beating people's backs, that we abandon the word. And more importantly, that we abandon the moral code. Because what is actually factual about the Qur'an, contrary to common understanding, is that the Qur'an is not a book of law. The Qur'an is not a book of law. The Qur'an is a book of moral teaching. There are laws in the Qur'an. And some scholars say there are about 324 verses and up to 500. Because Ali says 500, and Muqayyim Josiah says 324 verses of the Qur'an which pertain to law. And that's out of more than 6,000 verses. And when we look closely, we'll see that those verses don't make up more than almost about 12% of the book, which should let you know just how much of a book of moral teaching the Quran is really more about than anything else. That the Quran itself um, is not a book of law. That it is not a book of violence, as we know. And there are people who have continued to promote this idea. And they would say things like, well, what about the hundred verses in the Quran that talk about killing? They say, well, they're not a hundred verses in the Quran speaking about killing. There are words in the Quran which may mention the word kill. Sometimes it mentions the word fight. Sometimes it mentions the word struggle, jihad. But because those words exist in the Quran, there's no reason for embarrassment. If anything, we should take pride in the very fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided the Muslims on how to properly defend themselves and to defend themselves with dignity. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to a nature that has placed within all of his creatures for the most part. Uh, unless you're livestock, every, every creature on the planet, even many of the one, those that are microscopic, uh, they have natural defense mechanisms within them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not give you this nature and then expect you not to act according to your nature at certain times. But we act according to our natures when we need to. But to come back to this idea of these verses, killing, fighting, in the Quran, there about, the word kill is mentioned about 67 times in the Quran. But most of the times is in a narrative fashion. Basically, Allah is talking about people who killed others. This person killed that person. This person killed that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he actually gives an order to kill four times in the Quran. And in each case, when he tells us to kill, is in response to an, an act of aggression. In response to an act of aggression. Not to aggress against anyone, but in response to an act of aggression. Even the word to fight, qital in the Quran, it fundamentally means to try to kill someone. To, that is to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the permission to fight against others. Meaning fight against those people who are trying to kill us. Right, so they try to kill us, it's okay to try to kill them back. Right, so that's fundamentally what fighting entails. That's the idea. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you can't have, if I just simply walk up to you and punch you in your face, we don't call that a fight. We call that an assault. And so when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa have said, that I have been ordered to fight against people until they say, la ilaha illallah. Meaning fight against people, meaning that someone's trying to hurt him. That someone's, yes, I'm commanded to fight back against people. Unless they say la ilaha illallah, because Muslims are not allowed to fight one another. They're not allowed to kill one another. 
according to the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger The Quran it forbids killing in the Quran. It, it, it forbids killing in numerous places. Seven times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He forbids taking the taking of innocent life. Seven or eight times. And and twice he, he forbids taking or killing our children. He forbids us from killing prey while we are in the state of ihram, once in the Quran. He speaks about or gives a prohibition against killing as a narrative in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf. Don't kill Yusuf. So you find words kill quite in the Quran. But the overwhelming majority of these references are not about aggression. Most of them are about narratives. Most of them are, uh, and those actually are not related to narrative, they're in response to aggression. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word fight in his cognates is in the Quran about 60 times. The word jihad in his cognates are found in the Quran about 33 times. Most in narrative form as well. Speaking about what certain people do. Jahadu bi awarihim wa anfusihim that they struggle with their wealth and themselves. So we should not allow the fact that certain people misinterpret the words of the Quran or the teachings of Islam to be reason enough for us to go further or deeper into obscurity and to hide who we are and to hide um, what we represent. Of course, there are things in the Quran that would shock the conscience of any person who reads them, even sometimes the Muslim. But the religion is called Islam, submission, which entails or implies that there's going to be some times a struggle for us for you to 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 come to terms with certain things. That we are Muslims and Muslimun. Only die while you are Muslimun, that you are in the state of submission, and that you're trying to overcome certain things. And the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us uh, that the tough guy is not determined by his ability to overpower another. No, the tough guy is the person who actually can control his anger, who can control himself during times of anger. So the Quran definitely has things that we call sort of jalali. Uh, mentioned in the Quran, but the Quran is largely about rahmah, it is about compassion, it is about self-control, it is about discipline. This is the overall message of the Quran, don't be unjust. Do not allow your hatred of a people to lead you into injustice. Be just, it is closer to God consciousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what he calls us to. Yes, the reward of a bad deed is a bad deed like other. Or the reward of an offense is to commit an equal offense. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, justice. It's okay for you to seek justice. But after this, Allah, he says, But whoever pardons and seeks rectification and reform, then that person is rewarded before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that we find this message throughout the Quran, even in those verses that we refer to as the, the verses of the Hudud, that they relate to the penal code. That when Allah, he, yes, he talks about person steals, cut off his hand. But then he goes on afterwards and, and he says, that, 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 But the one who repents and reforms himself, then Allah will return to that person forgivingly in the Allah before Rahim. That he says is related to almost every one of these verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has he threatens people with a certain type of very harsh punishment in the Quran. We forget to Hiraba, the same thing. Uh, except for those who repent after you uh, before you get to gain power over them. You know, then Allah He's forgiving merciful to those people. So redemption is an extremely important part of our religious teaching. Redemption, incredible, extremely important part of our religious teaching. We cannot forget this. We cannot allow our anger, cannot allow our hatred, cannot not allow our hurt to lead us to do injustice against others. But that is what many people are calling us to do. When many people 
they say to us, well, why is it that every time a Muslim does something that they get one type of um, portrayal in the media, but when a white guy does it, it's a different type of portrayal. And we say that both things are wrong. It is wrong that there's an unequal portrayal. But is, is it the Islamic position for us to want other people to be demonized just like we are being demonized? I don't believe that that is what the Messenger Ali would have wanted. Because the Messenger believed that every human being was redeemable. This is exactly why it was easy for him, at least to an extent, to accept Wahji, the, the, the man who killed his, his uncle, Hamza, into Islam. He said, he said, keep your distance from me. But he accepted Wahji's redemption. He was redeemable. Abu Sufyan was redeemable in the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ. Sufyan ibn Umayyah was redeemable in the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ. That every person is redeemable. Every person is redeemable. So we can't get so caught up on demands for what we consider to be justice before, justice before considering whether or not it actually does conform to the dictates of justice. First and foremost. First and foremost, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah has a very popular statement about the Sharia, about Islam. Well, of course, Sharia is not synonymous with Islam, but the Sharia of Islam. And that statement, it goes, In the Sharia of Abnaha wa Asasaha al Hikami wa Musalih al Ibadi fi Ma'ashi wa Ma'ad. That the foundation and basis of the Sharia, it is wisdom and good or benefit for people in this life and in the hereafter. So it is total justice. And it is total mercy. And it's benefit, total benefit, a total good. And it is total wisdom. It says, so any matter that departs from justice into injustice, from mercy into its opposite, from good into, or to benefit into detriment, and from wisdom into just, then that thing is not part of the sharia, even if it is Claim to be through interpretation. For Sharia to Abdullahi Baina Ibadihi wa Rahmatu Baina Khalti. Because so the Sharia, it is Allah's justice which among his, his creatures, among his servants, and it is mercy amongst his creation. And it is his shade in the earth. And it is his shade. In the earth, and it is his wisdom indi indicative of his existence and of the truthfulness of his messenger, alayhi salatu salam, in the most perfect and most truthful of all ways. The Sharia is not only about justice, the Sharia is about mercy as well. More importantly, it's about mercy. It's more importantly about mercy than it is about justice. And of course, we seek justice, but we will never have total justice in this world. But we ourselves as Muslims have to hold ourselves up to the Islamic standard. That we cannot allow our decisions, our choices, our perspective to be influenced by people who are not informed by the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not informed by the examples of our predecessors. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We know what he did on the conquest of Mecca. We know how he came into Mecca. We know how he forgave the same people who had killed many of his companions. And they had tried to kill him on numerous, numerous occasions. And we see throughout our history these great men who have stood up and attempted to uh, once again to follow in the, the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi. And how he dealt with the, the Christians who were there in Jerusalem. He let them go. He let them go. He didn't do what the Christians did to them. What they did to the Muslims when they came and they took over. The Crusaders, they took over Jerusalem. He didn't do the same thing to them. 
We know the example of Umar Mukhtar, Rahmatullah Ali as well, of Libya. Like when he was uh, asked, or his, one of some of the troops, they demanded that he slaughter the captives that, that they received. And so he refused said, no, we're not going to kill the captives. He said, well, they kill our captives. Why don't we kill theirs? He said, well, they're not our teachers. They're not our teachers. And, so, and even still today, we're thinking about modern day people. There are many modern day people, very recent history. What about Brother uh, Abdul, uh, Abdul Munim, just moved, who we've seen this viral video. He was, he forgives the murder of his son, of his sister Ruqayya Abdul Mutakallam, who faced the murder of her son, and she forgave him as well. And then most recently in New Zealand, uh, our brother, our uncle Farid, Farid Ahmed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him patience, whose wife, Huzma, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept her martyrdom, who was on her way back to, to, to get him. Very brave soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept her. What about our brother Abdul Aziz, who was brave enough to chase away an individual at the other mosque who stood up and risked his own life, an immigrant from Afghanistan into New Zealand. He's brave enough to chase away that individual. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them all. But the fundamental message is that we have a moral code, a moral system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And we need to appreciate it. And we cannot allow people to drive us into, the, into, into, into non-existence. Not to allow drive us into the ground. And at the same time, we can't do to them what they do to us. We remain vigilant, but we cannot do to them what they do to us. If they demonize us, no, we don't demonize them. We don't demonize whole races of people, whole collections of people. That's not what we do. That's not our way. Even though those who are involved in politics would like for us to do that. Not, do not allow ourselves to be, to allow yourself to be manipulated by the media, manipulated by political parties and people who are seeking nothing more but more power. And they use us as cannon fodder for people like those individuals who likely was just watching the news all the time and being told that there's an invasion and on top of that there's actually something wrong with you being white that to be white is a sin and especially if you're a heterosexual a white individual that there's something problematic with you and you're going to lose your country to these people coming into your country they're going to take your job they're going to take your religion as a matter of fact they're going to replace your Christianity with their Islam. Because that's the type of imagery they're seeing on TV. This is what they're interpreting. And so people, they lose hope. I see them as people who lost hope, unfortunately. And we have to demand something better from the media and those that we work with. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Islam is just about mercy as it is about justice. Rather, it is more about mercy. It is not justice to demonize others or any type of population simply because the media did it to someone else or did it to us. We know the stories of forgiveness. Some of them have mentioned. Many of us have lost our way. We have to find our way back as believers. And before leaving, I'll just mention just a couple of suggestions. 
And I'm quite sure there have been many suggestions already since the incidents <clears throat> that recently happened. Physically, of course, we have to be more vigilant. We should constantly keep our eyes open, know where the exits are. We need to be ready for anything at any given time, unfortunately. But that's just the type of world we live in right now. But for our psychological health as well, I would, one, advise everyone to limit your viewing of the media, limit the amount of information that you get even from Muslim organizations, reports about Muslims being attacked here and attacked there. Because the more you hear those things, the, the more your anxiety increases. The more your anxiety increases. And when your anxiety increases, you start to talk about those things. And sometimes you talk about them in the presence of your children. And it increases their anxiety, believe it or not. But I would say that one of the ways that you can keep a good balance is that you learn self-defense as well. You get your children into learning self-defense. Uh, martial arts, boxing, even perhaps you learn how to shoot a gun. I've told people this a few, few different times this past week. That those things help people to deal with challenging situations. And we're, we're here in this journey, we're going to be challenged by many different things. And Allah told us that that was going to happen, right? Over and over and over when you read his book, that you want to be challenged, you want to be tested by loss of life and your fruits and your wealth, all, all different types of things. That we can't get so embarrassed about the things in the Quran that people say are about violence, that we completely abandon the Quran uh, to the point that that we don't even read it anymore. And if we read it, we make sure we avoid, we avoid those verses. If anything, reading those verses such as times like these is probably the most beneficial things that you can do. Because those were, these, these are the type sort of times that those verses were, were, were revealed for, for times of conflict. Those are the type of verses, Surah Anfa, Surah Tawbah, verses, surahs like that, for such times like this. But all human beings are redeemable. All of us have good in us. All of us can be reformed. That is the message of the Quran. Even those who do wrong, they can be reformed. Lots, lots of these things because you just don't know any better. Just that our reality is distorted by the things around us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We ask Him to forgive us and to aid us in all that we do and to increase our love for one another, our love for our families, our love for our ummah, insha'Allah. Allahumma habib ilayna iman wa zaynuhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuku wa al-ashyan wa ja'ala minna rashidin rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sabi'u alim wa zwa alayna innaka anta sawab al-rahim اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات واغفر لنا اللهم معهم بفضلك وإحسانك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لي حينا وميتنا اللهم اغفر لي حينا وميتنا اللهم اغفر لي ذكرنا بأنثانا يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تحنا أجرهم ولا تحتنا بعدهم يا رب العالمين اللهم إن كانوا محسنين فزف إحسانهم وإن كانوا مسيئين فتجاوز عن سيئاتهم يا رب العالمين اللهم بدل بدلهم دار خير من دارهم يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا آتنا من دونك رحمة وهجنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وصل الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين وعليكم السلام